All right, so I'm wanting to make this video because I just watched this video by the Young Turks. I think most of their videos are pretty good. And they're... Look at the like to dislike. Most of their videos have a good ratio. This one's not because it's bad. Google proves the pay gap is real and it's fucked up. Anna Cranston wages war on Google for perpetuating pay disparity and spewing some major BS in the process. Ah, uh, well, yes. Just... You hear that? That's the listen. beautiful sound of trolls everywhere already fiercely typing away at their keyboards, commenting that the wage gap is a myth before they even watch the first 15 seconds of this video. Ah, music to my ears. Now, if you don't believe the pay gap exists, you might want to Google it because Google is in some hot water with the Department of Labor for extreme pay discrimination against women. I'm Hannah Cranston and I'm about to wage war on Google for perpetuating pay disparity and spewing some major BS in the process. But like, please still let me keep my job on YouTube. Thank you. Last Friday, the US Labor Department accused your favorite search engine, if you use Bing, you should probably stop watching this video and reevaluate some life decisions. Well, they accused Google of systemic compensation disparities after investigating some of the company's job and salary history data. So why was the DOL all up in Google's interface? Well, the investigation is actually part of a lawsuit that the government has filed against the tech company because the Googs refused to hand over compensation information. Hmm. Wonder why? Google has contracts with the federal government. Uh, okay, I have to stop right here. The wonder why? I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't mean they've done anything wrong. You don't want to. You don't want to say anything or give any information, even if you're in the right. This is, you know, you, you want to apply it as much as you can. If there's no tr if they don't get in trouble for not giving the information, why would they give it right away if they don't have to? Even if they're in the right, if a cop stops you and asks if you have weed, you don't, you don't answer that question, even if you don't. Which means that they need to comply with routine audits that ensure that the company is abiding by equal employment laws. Now, these laws basically protect employees from discrimination based on race, sex, religion, sexual orientation, and national origin. Trump is currently rolling back these laws against discrimination, but that's neither here nor there. This time around, Google told the Department of Labor, no thanks to providing all the information needed for the audit, and that didn't fly. So the DOL took the company to court and discovered what Google probably didn't want to surface in their search results. According to the Office of Federal Contract Compliance, there is very significant discrimination against women and that there's a pay gap that exists across the entire workforce. Now, Google still claims that they are gender blind when it comes to compensation models and denies any gender-based disparity in the salary at their company. They also claim that the OFCC is asking for way too much information about compensation, which seems to be a necessary component for an investigation on compensation. And while in this case, the pay gap between men and women at Google is extreme, and the tech industry is notorious for a lack of gender diversity and salary disparity, this is just a high profile example of the much bigger issue of the wage gap that exists across the country and around the world. Now. I'm gonna stop again. So it it was just one accusation that's now a lawsuit against one company. So it's not it's like we don't even know if it's true yet. It hasn't even it hasn't even finished. We don't even have any result from the case. It's just one alleged co one company allegedly doing it. So we don't even know, we don't even know. This is a, this is a terrible example to use. They say it's one of many examples. Okay, we'll use a better example then. Or, you know, use some statistics or something. Instead of, you know, one example that's not even, it, it's not, it hasn't even happened, so. As many of you like to so politely point out on my Instagram, there are some issues with the frequently referenced women make 79 cents to the dollar statistic. Typical woman who works full time still earns. 79 cents for every dollar that the typical man does. In that, it simply compares the median salary for women to that of men. So while it's an accurate figure, it doesn't account for different size gaps in varying industries, uh, maternity leave or time off for family care, differing education levels, or even different jobs. That said, the gap does exist, and it's evident from the moment men and women enter the job market. A recent study compared MBA graduate salaries to see how this gap plays out on a more micro level. All else being equal, men will still make more in their first jobs after graduation than women. And this gap... Okay. All else being equal? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 
There, I can, I promise you, it's not all else being equal. They, they might have, you know, accounted for major or your your degree, for your job title, hours you're working, but that's still not everything. There's skills that aren't going to be shown from this. There's going to be a strength disparity, right? So if a, a man and a woman are going to the same job and they get the same title, but the job has a lot to do with physical labor or there's a physical aspect to it, it's likely that the man is going to earn more because they're going to be better at that, stronger and taller usually. <clears throat> And this gap only widens with age and with conflicting responsibilities that put a unique burden on women, like childcare. But even when you take out the mommy argument, childless women still make less than men in comparable positions and industries. So you can save that drama for your mama. Now let's take a look back at my Instagram. This one, women choose to go into lower paying professions. Now, while I have often chosen positions based on which pays the least, there's actually a lot of evidence that shows that when women enter an industry, the pay for those jobs decreases. And this goes for predominantly female fields, as well as ones that are predominantly male. And you can also show- All right. Supply versus demand. If, if there are women entering the workforce and men are not leaving, then there's going to be more supply for that position. Relative, if the demand isn't increasing but the supply increases, then yeah, the salary is going to go down. That's just how it works. I, I mean, that's just basic supply and demand. It can't get more basic than that. If you have... Half of the population now entering into a job that were not there before, the supply just doubled. <laughs> Wages are going to go down in that market. Of all your, well, women are just not good negotiators nonsense, right up your gap, because studies show that women are in fact perfectly suitable at negotiating. But they know that from different studies and from experience, that managers are less interested in working with women who ask for higher salaries. Studies show that they can even face backlash for doing so in the form of fewer assignments, negative performance reviews, and even having job offers rescinded. And lastly, my personal favorite argument. For okay, so with the, with the, with the, oh, uh, just mind fart. With what she's saying right here, with uh, women are poor negotiators, what she's saying about that is true. They do have a disadvantage when it comes to negotiating because of that. However, negotiating is not it's not as big of an issue. It's not the whole reason why they make less money. That's a small thing. Men, men will get more money from that. They will. Men are more likely to negotiate in the first place rather than just take whatever offer they're given they're more likely to negotiate harder from, from what i've seen this has mostly to do with uh differences in testosterone and cortisol but then there is what she mentions which is that social issue which is something that could be changed socially could close the gap a little bit between men and women from the wage gap is a myth camp that women don't work hard enough. Now, if the people who say things like this had, I don't know, ever come in contact with a woman, then they would know that this is not true. But just for funsies, I'll break this last one down for you real plain and simple. Women work a lot, but unfortunately, even when women work more hours than men in the same position, they do not get the same recognition for it. And then after they work their 15 hour day, do you know what they do? Unpaid. They go home and make dinner, take care of the kids, wash the dishes, take care of their partners, do the laundry, clean the house, put the kids to bed, probably respond to more work emails, and then do it all over again the next day. In fact, in the United States, women on average do over four hours of unpaid work a day, which is 60% more than unpaid work completed by men. So while I know my work will be cut out for me in the comment section of my Instagram after discussing such a polarizing fact on the internet, let's just do a quick recap. The wage gap exists. Go Okay, the the thing she just mentioned with unpaid work, that's not it's not like you're doing extra work not getting paid for it. She's talking about work that you do at home, right? So what she was mentioning laundry, cooking, cleaning, taking care of a kid, that sort of thing. Yeah, that happens. Okay. 
that doesn't that doesn't mean you should get paid for for doing stuff at home or something or that I mean if you want to make an argument for why it shouldn't be have that gap in unpaid working hours in the house okay but just I mean yeah that's one of the reasons so I I don't really know what I'm trying to point out there she was talking about like women don't work hard that well, I mean that doesn't even have anything to do <laughs> It doesn't. Google appears to have provided a great example of it in one of the largest, most well-known companies in the world. And we can start to shrink the gap by first acknowledging its existence and then making adjustments both at the policy level, like keeping equal pay legislation, Donald, and recognizing unpaid labor and at the business. Recognizing unpaid labor. So what are, are like, are, we, are they supposed to get paid for it? That doesn't make sense. Why would... Why would you get paid for doing chores stuff you're supposed to do at your house? And if she's not making that argument, what the fuck is she trying to say with that? Recognizing unpaid labor. What, it, what, do, what, what is that supposed to mean if it doesn't mean paying them for unpaid labor? I don't, I, I can't see what it's supposed to this level by allowing for more flexible hours to accommodate child care needs and addressing these disparities also by sharing this video um yeah i agree with making more flexible hours with the businesses um not just for accommodating the child care needs but i mean shit you got to go to the bank and the bank's open from nine to five and you work nine to five how the fuck are you supposed to plus if you do it during your lunch hour right uh, most most jobs don't have an issue with this, or at least most jobs you'd be able to leave or take more break in the middle of the day as long as you still get all your work done or put in all the hours you're supposed to do. Like if you work an office job. I mean, if you work something like fast food, that's not really going to happen, but I don't think that's much of an issue because it'll be automated, you know, in due time anyway. Care needs and, and share watching it, the blah, Young blah, blah, Turks. Blah. And I so... ACAP is real and it's fucked up. Oh. <laughs> I mean, her whole thing, like, half of the video was just basically about one example of an allegation of a lawsuit that hasn't finished yet. So that was, that was basically pretty shit. Second half of the video, she had some more reasonable stuff, some stuff that was true that I agreed with. Uh, I don't really, I, I don't know what she's trying to say about the unpaid labor. But that was kind of stupid. That was definitely stupid. Thanks for watching. Bye.